your Mod Podge scissors and your imagination, because with Decoupage Crafts, the possibilities are endless. Hi, my name is Katie from Lady Red Crafting, and let's get started with my top five decoupages from 2023. For this craft, I grabbed some wood letters from Walmart. We're going to go ahead and remove all the staples and the stickers on the back sides of these. An easy way to remove the stickers would be to use your heat tool or a hair dryer and you warm up the stickers. You should then be able to just peel the stickers right off. The next step is grab a paintable surface and spread out your letters. Once the letters have been spread out, I would grab some Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to paint the front of the letter and around the sides of the letter. So while we're painting the letters, what three letters would you put on the wall in your house? I went to Walmart to look for some letters and originally I was going to pick the word eat, but they did not have an A. So I was trying to find another three letter word because I really wanted to do this craft and I chose the word fun. But if you have other suggestions on other three letter words you would use for your wall, let me know, I'd love to hear. Thank you. So now that we're done painting the letters, we're gonna set these aside to dry. Let's go ahead and start building the rest of this project. For this step, I used three of the smaller five by seven burlap canvases. I'm arranging these canvases in the shape of a mountain and I'm taping them together with some blue painter's tape. Using my staple gun, I go ahead and I staple these canvases together. And while we have a moment, I wanna tell you about this wonderful playlist I'm a part of. It's hosted by Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun and Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIYs. This playlist and a link to their channels are listed in my description box below. Please check them out and give them some love. Thanks. Once the canvases are secure, I go ahead and remove the painter's tape. So we'll go ahead and set that aside and we'll get back to making these letters. I found this really cute bee napkin on Amazon and I decided I wanted to use these on the letters and decoupage them on. So I'm using my Mod Podge in matte and I'm going to go ahead and just paint a thin coat on the letters. I would recommend painting two coats on the letters. I didn't for this craft and I wish I would have done that. So if I were to do this craft again, I'd paint a thin coat of Mod Podge, let it dry, and then paint a second coat of Mod Podge. So we're gonna repeat this step for all three of these letters. We're gonna set these aside to dry. Once these letters have finished drying, I go ahead and I take my napkin. I'm going to lay that over the top of these letters. And I don't know if you saw me do this earlier, but I did remove the bottom layer on the napkin, so it's just that top layer. And what you can see that I did here is I made sure to position the B, because there's only the one B per quadrant on this napkin, in a spot on the letter so we could see it. To adhere the napkin to the letter, what I use is a hot iron. And I take a piece of parchment paper and I place that over the top of the napkin and I iron the napkin onto the letter. The glue underneath that has dried will warm up and everything will stick together. So now that the napkin is attached to the letter, we're going to go ahead and remove the excess napkin by just cutting that off. Then I will grab my zip sander and I'm going to go ahead and sand in a downward motion to get the remainder of the napkin removed from this letter. And it does a really good job on the outside pieces. For those inner pieces, I did use a razor blade to remove any extra napkin. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm using some Mod Podge and I'm just going to seal everything in. We're going to then repeat this step for all three letters. So now we're going to go ahead and use the iron with the parchment paper and just run that over the U. And now we'll go ahead and sand any of the excess napkin off of this U. And then we're gonna repeat this again for the N. And if you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button down below 
I really appreciate all the support. Thank you. So the next step in our journey is we're going to go ahead and make some of the embellishments. For this embellishment, I'm going to make a ribbon bow and I take a piece of ribbon and I just make a quick loop and glue that together with some hot glue. I then cut another strand of ribbon off and make a V shape. And I'm going to go ahead and attach those two items and I'm gonna scrunch them in the center and use a pipe cleaner to go ahead and twist that into place. We'll cut off any of the excess pipe cleaner and then we'll go ahead and cut another small piece of the ribbon that matches. I fold that in half and I'm going to hot glue that around the center of the bow. Once I get all of those items into place, we're going to go ahead and just cut the ends of the bow um, to whichever way you would like. If you want them in diagonal or dovetailed, whatever works best for you. Now that our bow is complete, we'll go ahead and set that aside. Here comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and put together the sign. I grab my letters and some wood glue. This wood glue is the one from the Dollar Tree and it works just fine. I go ahead and put a few dots of glue on the letter and then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue in between everything to help everything stay into place. I then go ahead and attach the letters to the canvases. And we're going to go ahead and add all three letters. Once we've added the letters, we're going to add a few other items just to make this a little bit cuter. So I found these burlap flowers at Dollar Tree and I absolutely love them. I, this is my last flower that I have in the pack. It was a three pack of them, but we're gonna use one on this craft. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that on. Next, we'll go ahead and hot glue the bow we made a few minutes ago and the cute little bee that I found at Dollar Tree. And now we have a beautiful, fun sign. For this craft, I found this cute dish at the thrift store and we're going to decoupage it. I'm going to flip this over to the back side and then I'm going to take my napkin and I'm putting the good side face down onto the dish. And now I'm going to paint my Mod Podge all over the top of the dish. We're not going to worry about the edges right now, we're just going to paint everything down on the dish that we can. done we set this aside to dry we're not gonna mess with the paper at all just leave it aside to dry and once it's dry it's gonna kind of look like this and I just go ahead and take my zip sander yes my favorite tool in my toolbox and I go ahead and I zip sand off any of the excess paper on the dish so now we're gonna put this face down and I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I'm going to paint over the top of the Mod Podge. By painting over it in white, what it will do is it'll allow the napkin to really show its true colors when we flip it over onto the front side of this dish. So that is why we're doing this coat of white paint. So in just a moment here, I'll show you what it looks like underneath. So while we have a moment, please drop a line below and tell me where you're watching from. I'm from Washington State. Let's flip this over so you can see what it looks like and you can see how vibrant these colors now look with the white paint below. But I don't want to leave this white so I'm going to paint it in a teal color. So I'm using an acrylic paint from Walmart and I'm just going to cover the bottom part of this leaf in teal. Once the paint has dried, I'm going to flip over the dish and I'm going to take a paper towel with a little bit of Windex on it and I'm just going to wipe down any extra paint that may have gotten in spots I didn't want and make sure the dish is nice and clean. Now let's grab some gold rubbing buff. Uh, this is the first time I've used this product but I've seen a lot of people use it before so I thought hey let's try it out. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint around the edges of this dish to give a gold rim um, on the top side of this dish. Now once this gold rim dries, I'm going to flip over the leaf and I'm just going to lightly brush any more of that gold all over the bottom just to kind of emphasize the fun leaf pattern on the back side of this dish. 
So now that everything has dried, I'm going to go ahead and flip over this dish so we can get a good look at what the inside of the dish will look like and what the back side of the dish will look like. Now, I didn't know what to seal this with, so honestly, I have not sealed this yet. If you guys have any suggestions on what you would seal it with, please comment below. Moving on to the Give Thanks Rolling Pen. I really liked how this one looked. I think this was actually my favorite one out of all of the different rolling pens that they had at the Dollar Tree, but I did want to improve it a little bit. So we are going to remove that ribbon and the sticker from the back side of this pen. And if you noticed, I was using my hot tool to help loosen up some of that glue and that does help a lot with removing some of those items. Next, I'm going to grab my blue painter's tape and what we're going to do here is just tape around the handles on this rolling pen because I want to paint the rolling pen handles a different color. And I grabbed Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel and I thought the darker color would just give it a richer look. So we're just going to go ahead and paint over the rolling pin handles here. It did take me three coats to get a nice coat over the top of these. So I don't want you guys to have to worry about watching that. So with the magic of videos, we'll just have that all done for you in just a moment here. So now that all that paint has dried, we'll just remove the blue painter's tape. And I'm going to flip this Give Thanks over to the back side. And once we do that, we're going to put that on a paintable surface here. And I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Sandstone. And I'm going to do a nice thick coat on the back side of this rolling pen. And this paint covered pretty good and I only had to do one coat. Next, I grab my heat tool and I just give it a quick dry. Now while that is finishing drying, I grab a napkin and this napkin I did get on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description box below. Um, I use a small piece of blue painter's tape so that I can separate the top layer off of the napkin. And we're going to decoupage this onto the back side of this rolling pen. So using my Mod Podge in matte, I'm just going to go ahead and paint the back side of this rolling pen. So once all of that Mod Podge has dried, I'm going to grab the napkin and we're just going to position it over the top of the rolling pen. And we're going to find a nice print on the napkin that we like. And then we're going to stop and cut a rectangle out of the napkin about an inch bigger than the actual rolling pin on each side. And once we've done that, we're going to lay that right down on top of the rolling pin. And I just grab a piece of parchment paper and I lay that over the top of the napkin. And using my iron, I just go ahead and iron that napkin right onto the Mod Podge. And that iron heats up that glue. If you haven't tried this before, it's amazing. And the napkin sticks to the rolling pin just perfectly. Next, I grab my zip sander. And if you haven't watched my videos before, it's one of my favorite tools in my toolbox. And I just start sanding in a downward motion. And I like to do this because, you know, I don't always cut a straight line. And if I have the paper a little bit bigger, I just get this nice little edge and it just fits perfectly by sanding that at the end. And I really like how that looks. And if you notice there, I just had to touch up a little bit of paint on the handles because of the sander, but it looks great. Next, I grab my Mod Podge again and just do a nice top coat over the top of this napkin. And this ribbon's pretty wide. It's a little bit over an inch. And so I decided that I wanted to just cut lengthwise down the ribbon about nine inches down and then I just make two smaller ribbons and what I'm going to do here is just make two basic bows and we're going to go ahead and hot glue these on to our rolling pin and I'm gonna put one on one side for give thanks and then I want to put the other one on the other side of the rolling pin right about the same spot as the opposite side just so that way it kind of gives it more of a seamless look so either way you flip the rolling pin over it just looks beautiful 
This lovely rolling pin is now ready for your tiered tray. So for this craft, I'm starting with this beautiful snowflake napkin and a ball canning jar. And one thing I found with decoupaging is you always want to have a nice background. A lighter color works great. And I typically stick with either white or plaster for different colors for my background. And what this does is it allows the napkin that tends to be sheer when you're putting it onto that surface, that white or that plaster color brightens up the napkin and allows the color to be very vibrant. Now while our jar dries, let's prep our napkin. Let's start by removing the back layers of the napkin. I like using a piece of painter's tape to help start the napkin from removing it from the back side. And now let's cut our napkin in half. For my next step, I'm going to use a egg carton and I'm setting my jar on top of the egg carton to help it have a shelf to sit on while I'm painting. And then I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to paint a coat of Mod Podge on the top half of the jar. Now let's grab our napkin and we're going to lay that napkin over the top of the Mod Podge. We're just going to set that on very carefully. Once you have it in the place that you'd like it, I'm actually going to take some cling wrap and I'm going to place a small piece over the top of my napkin and I'm just going to slightly press down the napkin onto the Mod Podge to help smooth everything over the surface. And once I'm satisfied with the smoothness of my jar, I'm going to remove that cling wrap and I'm going to leave that alone and let it dry. I know that's the hard part, letting it dry, but you do need to leave it alone. And once it is completely dry, you can go ahead and repeat that same step on the other half of the jar. And since the napkin is a little bit larger than the jar, I do trim a little piece of the napkin off and only allow for a less than a quarter of an inch of overlap. And once we remove the cling wrap, I noticed that on the bottom part of the jar, it needed an extra coat of Mod Podge. So I added that really quickly and then I'm gonna set that back on my egg carton to dry. And while that's drying, let's work on some embellishments. These wood snowflakes came from the Dollar Tree last year, and I'm just going to stain them with some antique Waverly wax. So I found these pearled push pins at the Dollar Tree, and I thought these would go great in the center of our snowflake. So I'm using some pliers and just removing the push pen part of these. And next, we're gonna use some hot glue and just apply them to the center of our snowflakes. So now that our jar is dry, we're gonna grab out that Mod Podge and we're going to paint a coat to seal everything in on the first half of the jar. And then we'll repeat once everything has dried. And now that our jar is dry, let's embellish. I'm using some jute twine that has a white stripe in it that we're going to use around the top layer of the jar. And I found this twine at the Dollar Tree. It was in the nautical section this spring. And to start the jute, I did use some hot glue and then we're just going to wrap it around the top of the jar until you are satisfied with the way it looks. Next, I'll cut the twine and add a little bit more hot glue just to make sure nothing falls off. And I found that using this makeup applicator from the Dollar Tree is a great way to press down on some hot glue without burning your fingertips off. So let's add our snowflake. I thought maybe I'd put it in the center of the jar, but then I liked how it looked up with the twine. So I grabbed my hot glue and just hot glued that right into place. 
And now our jar is complete. I just love how this turned out. You can leave it as is, or you can fill it with some greenery or other flowers. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button below. So for this craft, we're going to use the house backing, the Revon transfers, a napkin from my stash, and a chalkboard tag from my stash. To get started, we're going to whitewash the front of this house. And I'm using my white chalk paint from Waverly. We're just doing a nice coat of white paint on this. This will allow the napkin when we decoupage it to really shine through bright. I'm using my air dryer to dry this. And next, we'll go ahead and do a second coat. I just wanna make sure it's nice and bright underneath this napkin. So I really wanted to make sure the white looked nice. Now I grab a quick piece of painter's tape and pull off the top half of the napkin. Once that's complete, we take some Mod Podge and we do a nice thick coat of Mod Podge on our surface. And I'm going to let this dry before we apply the napkin. So we'll set this aside while it dries. Now that everything is dry, we're going to apply our napkin. To do this, I just lay my napkin nice on top of the house, a piece of parchment paper, and then I use my hot iron and I iron everything into place. The iron heats up the Mod Podge so that the napkin sticks very nicely to this surface. Now I'm gonna grab my zip sander and we're going to go ahead and sand off all the extra pieces of napkin around the edges of this house. And you wanna make sure you're going in a downward motion. And if you don't have a zip sander, a regular sanding block works just fine or just a piece of sandpaper. And then what I like to do on this one here, because it had those nice ridges in the house, I wanna see those. So I'm using my sander to just sand out the napkin and the glue from those ridges. So you kind of have that three like parts to that sign now when you look at the front of the house. The next step here is we take our tag and we're just going to white wash it with some white chalk paint. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but um, I did want a nice coat to kind of cover the lines a little bit. And now I'm going to grab those rub-on transfers and that's why I wanted to whitewash the tag because the rub-on transfers are black so I really wanted them to stand out so I figured white would help with that. And I'm cutting out the words you are a wild flower and we're going to rub that on to the tag. I've never used one of these rub-on transfers. I use a popsicle stick and it works really well to just kind of rub the words onto the tag and then once you feel like everything is on there you're going to just peel off the clear vinyl that's over the top of it. Next I'm going to reuse one of my bows that I saved. Next we go ahead and just glue with hot glue the tag right onto the center of this house and now your house is complete. Like I mentioned earlier I keep a lot of things from different crafts like little extra bows, strings, etc, wine corks, and I just keep them in a bowl of doohickeys that sit on my desk for when I'm doing crafts. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, please hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, please remember, craft more, stress less.